Hello, everyone, and welcome to Silicon Sounds Audio for the Rest of Us. Today, we're going to have a video review of one of the recent releases from Knowledge Zenith, affectionately known as KZ, the KZZAS. The KZZAS brings a compact design housing lots of tech. Uh, we're talking about seven balance armatures and a single dynamic driver in each housing. Physically, very attractive. On the large size, uh, side of medium, and while some may consider it bulky, it actually fits very, very well. Fit and finish are top notch. Uh, the shell is smooth, uh, medium in weight, uh, very attractive, comes in different colors. Here we have the black and gold. There's also available white and gold, if I'm not mistaken. The KZ ZAS is quite easy to drive. But it has a caveat about that. If SPL is all you're after, you're after the loudest, then no problem. It can be driven with any phone, any device. But out of the box, the ZAS has a very prodigious amount of bass output. Uh, I would say bass cannon almost level. And with uh, concentrating on and focusing on much higher quality amplification, uh, source as it were, uh, tip and cable rolling, that can be brought under control and uh, bring the uh, sonics of the KZZAS to a much more balanced um, uh, presentation. A little bit of stats before we get started. Impedance, 24 ohms. Sensitivity, 109 dB. Uh, obviously very easy to drive, but please pay attention to the quality of the source and tip and cable rolling. Uh, may be necessary to get extract the most performance out of this IEM. Build quality and fit, much like the KZZEX, which I have right here, which is going to be on the table for comparison's sake. It's very well built. The ZAS is very well built with a with very attractive resin, resin shell. Um, haptics, really good, feels good in the hand. The included accessories are interesting in that the cable is a step up from what I've seen in other budget KZ products. Uh, here's the cable for comparison. Uh, I believe it's a silver plated copper cable, um, very nice, a little thicker than most of the KZ cables I've seen from budget KZs, and it's not a throwaway, it's something that you can set aside for if you need it later, so pretty good on KZ's uh, point there. With respect to the tips that are included, I didn't like them, I don't like the ultra soft KZ tips, but that's just a personal thing, uh, it might fit you, your mileage may vary but I just find they're soft in all the wrong areas to be comfortable for me. The box and presentation are actually a step up from the budget KZs as it should be, as this uh, IEM, I believe, is in the $60 to $70 US range or something like that. So um, definitely a step up as well. So right out of the box, let's talk about the sound. As you put these on, after unboxing, the, the bass is very prominent. Not the best example of control or detail either. In my experience, the ZAS has two things needed to happen in order to get the bass under control. Tip cable rolling and powering with a more capable source. It's not about the power, it's about the quality of that power. And the ZAS brings that to light most definitely has really good sub bass reach with more emphasized, which is more emphasized than the mid bass. Slam and impact are quite good. Uh, if you listen to some tracks that I use, for example, um, Intelligent Hoodlum by Mannix, this is a drum and bass track which really hits very hard. Uh, had me sitting up in my seat when I played it the first time at um, fairly decent volume with the ZAS. Uh, texture and detail retrieval are not necessarily class leading. Uh, the bass does hit hard. There's a lot of quantity, in particular in the sub bass, although uh, absolute texture and detail are not uh, class leading. Uh, this can be heard in Circumstance by Wayman Tisdale, fantastic bass guitarist, uh, where the bass output was strong, but not the most detailed and textured. Likewise, in the track Stella uh, by a guy called Gerald, uh, Gerald Simpson, the low end was very strong, very distinct, uh, and uh, fairly tight, but could have been a little tighter, a little bit more detailed, although it sounded wonderful. Uh, with house music tracks and uh, dance music, the Zass does uh, very well for itself. Mid-range. The mid-range is slightly recessed, yet male vocals in particular sound rich and full, very rich and full. 
Tenderhearted Lover by John Stoddart, one of the tracks I love to use for this, uh, for male voices, came through with that satisfying richness and detail that I know the track possesses. Absolutely, it's in that track. It's not a detail monster. The ZAS has lots of detail, but it's not a detail monster a la... Um, well, I can't say anything on this table is actually a detail monster. But in terms of detail, it does fall behind um, the MS2 and maybe even a little bit behind the SG-01 on detail retrieval. But the detail that's there is of good quantity and quality and keeps the track from becoming boring. So that was pretty good. Um, it avoids also the harshness and the strident leanings that some previous releases have exhibited and a lot of other IEMs in this price range. So it's smooth and enjoyable experience, if not the most detailed or organic in a way. Um, treble. The Zass has treble that is detailed and open sounding, yet it is safe treble. And what do I mean by that? At the very top of the treble range, it is rolled off. The level of detail is good, but it must be noted that the upper registered do exhibit that roll off. Uh, this really keeps things under control, avoiding the potential for excessive brightness, uh, but may negatively impact air and sparkle. Uh, when switching, for example, to the MS2 or the SG01, you do notice that they have more air and sparkle. This is very apparent in a track such as um, Ronnie Jordan's Vanston in Place 12 AM, which has lots of symbol work and effects all over panning left and right a lot of air and uh, you notice it it slightly reduced when switching from one of these over to the Zass but the detail the quality is there again lacking a little bit of that organic uh, quality still the treble has ample detail and clarity and is smooth enough for longer listening sessions without fatigue uh, which some previous releases can't claim to have uh, basically, one of the best KZ trebles I have heard, which again is something significant. In fact, I would chance to say that out of the KZs I've heard, the ZAS is probably the top or very close to the top in terms of sound quality. I've heard maybe only around five of their releases, and this is a good one from them. Uh, so the, the treble is really a good topper to the rest of the frequency spectrum. Not the most airy or sparkly or nuanced but very good, very easy to listen to, and um, quite engaging. Imaging and soundstage. Well, the Zass throws up a reasonably wide soundstage with moderate height and just average depth. Imaging is very stable and believable. Things stay stable within their positions within that soundstage. Uh, a definite step above, for example, the DQ6, which is another model in their line, which I liked very much, but I found always suffered with a very constrained uh, imaging and sound stage. Uh, I can't say it's much better than the ZEX. In fact, the ZEX and the ZAS image to my ears very similarly uh, with the same, um, uh, I guess, characteristics when it comes to imaging. So let's talk about some comparisons here. Okay. ZEX, $22 US. It offers a more balanced tuning as opposed to the obvious V shape of the ZAS. Um, bass output is hands down won by the Zass, the ZAS, but then things get more complicated. Both do better with a quality source, that's for sure. And it's really a choice between an occasional heavy-handed approach or a much stronger output and a much more even-keeled approach with the ZEX. Mid-range is definitely more weighty on the ZAS, and one of the things I talked about in my review of the ZEX was the mid-range was great, but... When compared to something like the ZAS, you can tell that the mid-range lacked note weight. Uh, the note weight is definitely missing, at least uh, somewhat, with the ZEX. In, continue, in particular, when compared directly against the ZAS. Uh, both are smooth uh, performers in the treble, and um, each of them has uh, treble rolled off at the extreme top, again, to keep control. Uh, lacking just a little bit of air and sparkle. It's very hard for me to choose between the two on treble. They're different. Uh, the ZEX has a special driver in there that we're not familiar with, uh, in particular being used that often, I should say, versus the um, BA in the ZAS. Both have very good treble. It's hard for me to decide between the two. When we go compared to the Hitis, 
H-I-D-A-I-Z-S, I hope I pronounced it right, the MS-2, Mermaid MS-2. This is a very special IEM. Uh, mind you, it's about $20 more or $15 to $20 more expensive than the ZAS. How do they compare? Base on the ZAS definitely has greater output, although the MS-2 is no slouch in that department at all. Um, but in all other metrics that you can measure, I would have to say that the MS-2 is superior. Uh, it's much more controlled and detailed with great texture from top to bottom of the frequency range. Mid-range and treble on the MS-2 uh, really has a lot greater extension uh, than the ZAS um, and clarity. Detail retrieval is just a different level on the MS-2. There's a lot of detail, a lot of things you're going to hear in a, in a, in a track that would be missed by other IAMs. The ZAS does very well with that as well but can't compare to the MS-2 when it comes to detail retrieval. And it does that without sounding clinical, which is excellent. So let's move on to the dark horse in the room, the Richo SG-01. This is a phenomenon. I would have to say that the SG-01 does many things that the ZAS does, and a few of them better. The ZAS it will be liked by a lot of people for its very uh, popular kind of tuning, the SG-01 does its, goes its own way. You can't really say it sounds like any other IAM in particular in the price range. Treble extension is greater. Uh, cohesion is better on the SG-01 because the SG-01 is a single dynamic driver, much easier to attain uh, cohesion when you're using a single driver versus uh, multiple drivers, although KZ has done an admirable, admirable job doing that. Um, uh, Trouble clarity and extension go to the SG-01. Base quantity goes to the ZAS. Great base quality, um, I would have to tip it a little bit in the direction of the SG-01. For mid-range, they're very close to each other. Uh, detail retrieval, I would say the SG-01 might have the edge here. But in terms of listenability, both of them are quite uh, equal in that regards in the mid-range. Air, sparkle, and nuances, I would have to give a slight edge to the SG-01. Uh, the ZAS um, tuning, even though uh, V-shaped, is a little bit more on the safe side. The SG-01 takes chances and actually is very successful in doing so. Uh, both are very good. Both are keepers. So in conclusion, let's get it right out of the boat here. The ZAS is probably the best sounding KZ I have heard in my limited uh, exposure to KZ IEMs, I've had about four or five that I've listened to, and it's definitely one of the best, if not the best KZ that they've produced. It's a good combination of sonics and looks that I'm sure will please many people. It's the best earphone, or I should say, is it the best earphone at $65 US asking price? That is not so cut and dry. Uh, while it offers tuning that will be pretty sure to satisfy a majority of people, and I believe it will, it's not necessarily the be-all and end-all of the sub $75 range. For just under around $15 more, there is the Hidas MS2, which I think beats it on most metrics. In fact, almost all metrics, except for the deepest bass rumble, which the MS2 has, but not at the quantity of the ZAS. For $15 less, we have the Richo, SG-01, which is just a phenomenon, and I think it gets a strong wreck. Um, uh, much like the HC Heart Mirror, I believe the SG-01 is a must-buy. Uh, still, the KZ ZAS is quite an achievement, absolutely. The tuning is different from some past KZ models I've listened to. Really has some care done in this. Um, hopefully, it's a good sign for things to come from Knowledge Zenith. I'm really looking forward to the other releases. So in the end, if you're a fan of KZ or a fan waiting to happen, the KZ ZAS gets a strong recommendation. If you want to look around what's available in the, uh, in the, in the market, well then things get a little bit more tough. If you like prodigious bass output, a uh, very rich, um, impactful sound with a nice note weight, the KZ ZAS might just be for you. So that's the end of my review. I hope you uh, subscribe to our channel. We also have a an Instagram presence. I uh, spend a lot of my time in Chai Fi Auto Reviews um, on uh, Facebook. And 
will be presenting more in my blog the reviews out in the blog all the links are below have a great day and continue to support and tell others about silicon sounds audio for the rest of us